Hi everyone, today we're looking at something called codominance and what we, try, want, what we want to try and answer is how um, genes that show codominance, how does the inheritance vary compared to when we just have dominant and recessive alleles. Okay, so let's start by thinking about two flowers and these flowers have uh, their petal colour is determined by a gene. So our red flower uh, we, if we say in this situation then red is the dominant allele so we don't know by looking at it if it's big R big R or big R little r it could be either of those genotypes but if we're saying that red is the dominant allele then what we do know is that our white plant must be uh, little r little r so if we were to cross these two plants together we could either have a red flower as one of the uh, the offspring or we could have a white flower, but we couldn't have anything else. So whatever combination of alleles here and here we look at, we will either have red or we'll have white flowers. Let's look at a different example which shows codominance. So we have a cow. Now this cow, it might look brown, but uh, actually we say it's red. Uh, so it's a red coloured cow. And then we're going to breed this with a white cow. So again, the colour of their coats is coded for by a gene, but this time the gene shows codominance. When we breed these two together, we find that some of the offspring could be red and some of the offspring could be white, just like the parents. But the difference with codominance is that you can also have a third phenotype. Some of the offspring are almost a combination of the parents. In this cow example, this third genotype, sorry, this third phenotype, what it looks like, is called Roan. Okay, so let's look at um, what's actually going on in terms of the inheritance of these alleles then. So if we have our two parents, let's just think about what might be going on based on what we already know in terms of our regular dominant and recessive alleles. So what we're going to say is we're going to say that these two parents uh, are going to breed together and they're going to produce a roan offspring and we want to know how that works. So what we've looked at so far would tell us that something like this is going on. So we've looked so far at having alleles so we would say okay we've got this uh, big C here let's say that this has got the dominant allele and this has got the recessive allele and we use that letter a big letter and a small letter to represent what's going on. So based on what we've done before, we would end up with um, this gamete and this gamete coming together. But then what would happen there is we'd have big C, little c. And that would mean that one of the alleles was dominant over the other and we wouldn't have a mixture. We'd just end up with something that was brown because it has the dominant, sorry, red, it has the dominant allele. So it's obviously not working in the same way as what we've looked at previously. So we need to rethink it. Okay, so instead of doing it like that, let's do it like this. The C represents the gene. So here is the gene for coat colour. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a superscript there. And we're going to use a capital R to represent red. So here, this whole thing, the C and the R together, shows us the allele for red colour. And we're going to say that this cow, again, remember you can't always tell just by looking at something, but if we say we know that this cow is homozygous, which means that it has this allele as well, is C with a big R. So what about the white cow? Well, we have to still use the C because it's telling us it's the coat colour gene. If we had a different letter here, it would be a different gene entirely. So having the C and the C tells us it's the same gene. But we've obviously got a different allele, so we use a different letter. And here we're going to use W to represent the white allele. So this whole thing here is the allele for the white coat colour. And again, we don't know by looking at it. Remember, this is not a case of recessive, so we can't ever tell just by looking if it is um, homozygous or heterozygous. So we're going to say that this is also homozygous. 
So when these breed together, one of these alleles is inherited and one of these alleles is inherited and we end up with an offspring which is heterozygous. It has one of the uh, CR alleles and one of the CW alleles. So this is where codominance is different. If you have an individual which is heterozygous, the phenotype is different to either of the homozygous phenotypes. Now what that means is, if you actually know what the homozygous phenotypes are, and then you see a different phenotype, you know that it must be the heterozygote. Let's have a look and see how this uh, pattern of inheritance would play out um, in our Punnett square situation. So we're going to see if we can calculate our offspring uh, genotype ratio. So you can see here that um, I said let's start off with two of our roan individuals. So these are both heterozygotes just because it makes it a little bit more interesting with what goes on. You can see here that I've started off with the same format. This is always the format that we use. So we know that these are heterozygotes because they have got the heterozygote genotype, sorry, they've got the heterozygote phenotype, which means that they both must have this genotype, CRCW, and then that must mean that the gametes, there's one of the gametes. Now, it's really important that all of that is within that circle. This whole thing, remember, the C and the R is the allele. You can't just have part of it. You have to have it together, it's a unit. That means the other gamete is CW, and then because the other individual has got the same genotype, the gametes there would be the same as the first individual. So if we're going to do our Punnett square to work out our offspring genotypes, that means that this has to come down here, this has to come down here. And then for this individual, they were going to come down here. So now all we have to do is we have to, just like before, bring them together. So the first individual offspring genotype here takes the CR from this parent and the CR from this parent. So again, if you look at the genotype here, we've got the full allele C and R and C and R. We just do the same thing for each of those possible combinations. So when it comes to our genotype ratio, if we look at them, we can see that we've got one genotype like this, one, two of these genotypes, and one of these. So that means we have a, uh, a one to two to one ratio. And the colours, well, this one here has got uh, two red alleles, so it's red. This one has got one of each, which means in our cow example it's roan, so we'll represent that with pink. This one is also pink, and this one would be white. So our genotype ratio is 1 to 2 to 1, and remember we always show those genotypes in the same um, order. And our phenotype ratio is also 1 to 2 to 1, and then we show the phenotypes in order. So the way that you do this uh, cross with codominant co alleles is exactly the same as our monohybrid cross with dominant and recessive alleles. It's just that the way that you then interpret the genotypes to see what the phenotype is, is a little bit different.